Hello and welcome to Colin Bradley Artcast. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. No Mims this week, unfortunately, to do the introduction. She is uh, out with Elowin at the moment. And she's off out, so she wasn't around, unfortunately, to do it. But um, maybe next week. It was uh, it was nice, I think, to have her back. Everyone said that it brought back memories of when the the yeah. podcast had a proper formal introduction. So um, maybe we'll bring her back uh, again next week. Or I think this is this platform has a way of me, me being able to queue up music and things like that. So I think I may be able to play even the introduction music. So maybe I'll I'll try that next week. See if we can get a more polished episode going. It'd be nice. Yeah. Um, ten years in January that we've been doing this podcast, Dad. Would you believe it? That's, that's amazing, isn't it? it? It doesn't seem it. Although we have a couple of breaks, I suppose, and that sort of it, it elongates it a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's it's ten years ago. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of episodes. Um, yeah. Can you imagine going back and listening to? 10 years ago you know it's just crazy to think you know what's happened in 10 years Mm. and um if you were coming across the podcast now and then going back and listening to all of the episodes god you'd be condensing 10 years of our lives in however many minutes hours it's probably a lot of hours to be fair actually (laughs) but it's crazy i did i did listen to it wasn't recently probably six months or so ago i did listen to the first one again and I, I i was quite surprised how polished it was considering it was the first one really yeah I, and you must do that check the first one or first two or three out i mean it got better i, I think i got up to about five and then i thought that was enough but uh, <laughs> because i've all heard it all before you see it bored me but you were no, there so <laughs> you were I, there <laughs> i learned a lot though yeah <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. Um, anyway, how have you been, Dad, this past week? Um, we've been busy, as you know. We're, we're right in the middle of it all now. We've had lots of workmen here, and it's uh, it's going to it's going to stretch on now up to Christmas, and could be beyond Christmas as well. The way things are going, but uh, the bulk of it will be done by then. Um, a bit of sort of little lags from little different things we want to polish up on um but it's very busy and uh, we're busy and you know the whole family's busy as well because we're, we're having you know people visiting us and all sorts and of course christmas is now not far away so uh, we're starting to start thinking about that as well now i should point out that you haven't decorated your house for christmas but there is a christmas decoration in the background there is there? Oh, You've got oh a yes. on yes. the wall. <laughs> that, uh, there's a story behind that, Steve. That's that's not going to be here. That's going to be downstairs, in anticipation that we're going to be <laughs> dressing it up for our Boxing Day and the family meeting, and uh, so that's not it, it, that's not up here. <laughs> you're not <laughs> you're not decorating your house for Christmas in October. <laughs> Just yeah. to clarify for everyone. <laughs> no, it's really, it's really, um, Eileen um, saw it and thought, that, that's nice, but that will go. And she had a little place for it, you know, downstairs. So um, that started the ball rolling. And we've got other things as well. You can't see them. I mean, actually, you probably can just see uh, other things ticking on the yeah. side. Yeah. Um, so it, 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 she's getting one or two things together like that as well. Um it's quite exciting to know that we're going to be um, hosting for many, many years. We we um, haven't done a, a family Christmas here because the family grew, as you know, and it's expanded. We just couldn't hold the people here. It was just too many people, too many family. Uh, but um, downstairs is a different matter, and we're hoping to get everybody here. So that's that's going to be lovely. Oh, that's the story. No one panic. Everyone, don't panic. It's all right. <laughs> it's not. It's not being. It's not Christmas just yet. No. Um, <laughs> lovely. 
Excellent. Well, um, I had a bit of a surprise yesterday because you sent me your latest picture that you did and I didn't know what it was. I didn't know that you'd finished it and it blew me away. So as with last week, I'm going to tell future Steve to start to put up the picture uh, on screen now so that yeah. everyone can see it um, and we can talk about it. Let's, um, let's get cracking, Dad. Uh, tell us about this one. Well, it's, it started life with um, my wife, Eileen. She found it. There's, there's several sites now that, um, like Pixabay, that allow you to use the photographic references. And what it was, she came down and said to me, uh, showed me the picture, said, do you think this is too hard? And I looked at it and said, no, not really, no. I mean, I've done things like that before, so I knew that um, it was um, it was going to be okay so yeah yeah that's good i'll um, leave it with me and i thought about it looks i love i love the impact it made on me at that time it was very striking and nothing like it i've, I've done before i've done flowers before and so i thought yes you know give it a go and i thought this would because it had a very dark background and it looks black doesn't it, it but it's not black it, it was red it was a very um, slight, slightly darker, maroonish kind of red, quite bright though. Three three zero. If anybody wants to know, three three zero in the Carbathella range. I know it by heart now, so I keep looking at it and telling people it's a three three zero, three three zero. So anyway, and um, that's in the background, and then black on top, and that's it. That's only those two colours. Really. Mm -hmm. and what colour paper is it well the thing is you see if you if more colours you put on uh, the, the, the more watered down it is you know it's the wrong word but you know what I mean it becomes a bit messy so I did think about putting an intermediary colour um, I don't know whether you know 640 in um, Carbacello that's a lovely colour and I, I thought about putting the 330, or I decided to put that on as a start, because I'm using the dark grey pastel matte paper there, I ought to mention. So I already had a dark surface in which to work on. And then the um, that 330 went in, and then I thought, now, shall I put the, the 240 on, uh, 140 on, which is the dark, very dark maroony one. And I thought, no, let me let me just try, because I've done something like it before and it works. And I thought, let's just try putting the black on it. Perfect. It, it just, that was it. And we, use your finger. You see, when you put the, um, the, two, the, the 330 on, you rub it with your finger to start with and rub it in. And make sure that if it's not uh, enough on there, you put a little bit more on. So you have a really good base. And then the black goes in on top of that. But it doesn't just stay on top, it mixes with it, you understand? But being the very strong colour, it mixes with it. So what you get, in fact, is like a mixing black. If you had a paint, if it was paint, you'd mix the black and mix the red and mix it all up together and you'd get that very rich, very dark colour, which is what we've got. It's one of the benefits we have of pastel, you, know, you can play with that. So that's the only colour that's in that background. But consequently, I also had to use, or didn't have to, but I decided to use the 330 in the picture as well as part of the, the flowers. But it was very, very different, very new. And, and I, people, I put it in the intermediate range, Steve, because I want people to do it. But it is going to be tricky. It's tricky to keeping the, first of all, you're using black again, and black uh, and the 330 against that very light um, colours in not just the flowers but also in the bars as well and that can be and when if you when they see the video of this they'll see me very very painstakingly uh, applying that you can't rush it it's got to be done um, very painstakingly making sure that you don't overlap because one slip that's all it needed one slip of either the 330 or the black into the colors of the pot and you ruined it you could rub it out, but it, it doesn't work that way. As soon as you start rubbing it out, you, you get a um, a spoiled colour. 
that's a new word for me. I've only just thought of it. A spoiled colour, if you know what I mean by that. So that's it. That's the background. Anything else you want to know about it? What colour paper are you using? Dark grey pastel mat. I figured you must, because that's the only way you could get that strikingly dark, dramatic background with just two colours. Yes, but I also took a leaf of uh, out of the book when I was doing the shadow pictures. You remember when I do the shadow pictures, I put the background on uh, alternately. You know, I put a little bit of, um, of the um, the image and the colours or the not the uh, uh, tones on, and then I put the black or the dark colour into it, uh, the background. So you get a contrast and straight away you've got to get that contrast for two reasons really first of all to check that you've got the contrast right you know you've got enough and not too much contrast or um, you've got a very strong contrast sometimes I put it against the, the white and generally speaking that doesn't work very well but in this case it did and the other reason I do it is for personal reasons and I hope the artist would think the same thing because you need the encouragement once you get a little bit done and you can put that background on that's when you think wow you know your reaction to it was a oh, wow well that's that's the reaction you get when you first start doing it and you need that because that's the spur to um, keep keep it going because everybody I, I didn't uh, I didn't come across any areas there that I found difficult as uh, such, you know. I mean, I don't, difficulty, I would call it difficult, I would say, and I had to think about it a bit more. Do you know the difference between the two things? Difficult is when you think, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do now. But um, it wasn't like that. It's never been like that with something like that. It's how can I work this out, do you know? And you have to think about it a lot and then suddenly try it, if necessarily, um, on a small piece of the picture before you actually plunge in the deep end. But there's a lot of lessons to be learned on these things and I hope people will find that interesting. I do when I'm doing it, so I'm sure people will find the same, same thing. It doesn't look easy to go round the you mentioned about going around the vase and not spoiling the color of the vase it That's doesn't right. look easy going around all the individual plants and flowers either well that yes that's a very good question because when you look at things how on earth do you get between the especially on the right hand side of that uh, vase of flowers themselves you've got spiky um, leaves there I, I imagine they would be very thin leaves and and you have to go between the two there you have to put that leaf in and you have to go between the two but I never found that too much of a problem I'll be honest but I think it helps to have the dark grey pastel map because you've already got a contrast there if you did it on a lighter coloured background you'd have to put that base colour in to be able to get that contrast but with the dark grey pastel map you don't have to do that You've got the contrast already. You've just got to elaborate it by putting in the uh, the correct tones. I hope that makes sense to you, but it, it wasn't difficult. No, that was the answer to your question. No, it wasn't. Let's but talk about let's talk about the um, color of the vase because that's probably one of the most appealing things about this picture is how mm -hmm. um, really lovely it is to to look at just that color. Yes. Do you remember what what colours made up the vase? Why is it so, yes. so lovely to look at? Absolutely. Well, there's two parts of that vase. There's the light, very light areas, and then you've got the medium and the dark tones. Both are treated slightly differently. What you do with the light tones, you're using the, the white, of course, and you're using the pinks and the mauvey pinks. Most of those colours there are Creta colour, believe it or not, and because they've got a brilliant range of the of violety, pinky violety colours, and uh, so most of them were that. But you put those colours in on top of the white, building the light colours up, 
obviously. And then you, you use a dark color, I think at some points of that, but not in the very light areas, I use the 330, which is a dark color. But just by putting a little bit of that in and blending it, you can get the tone. It still stays light. Now in the dark areas, that's behind those white flowers that are overhanging, uh, you can't put the light. If you put the light in, you're in trouble because you never get it dark enough. So there you put the medium tones in that you've been using in the lighter colours. You see what I mean? And so you then build up your base like that. But if you put too many light colours in, you're not going to get it dark enough. Because just around those white flowers, there are hints of black as well. So the black goes in, you can imagine trying to put black on, on the light colours, it wouldn't work at all. But it works then because you get that contrast. But I must tell you that the shadows that I've got on those that area is totally different to the reference picture. The reference picture showed it as being a browny tone. Uh, that's partly due to the photographic printing, uh, the scan that I, I did. So that doesn't always come out as it should do. Uh, and partly due to the photographic reference because it, it, the inks on the prints, uh, the, the photographic um, uh, process that they use sometimes can alter colours. And it did on this and it was a horrible colour. I... <laughs> And this is the problem, of course, when you've got somebody copying from a photograph and, and are not capable of changing it because of uh, it's scary, isn't it? If you think, well, I'm on my own if I change it. Um, but uh, with experience, you know that you can change it. So those colours there are my own colours. They're not the colours that were on the original photograph. Interesting. That is, that is yeah, that is a skill. Absolutely, to be able to manipulate that. I feel like you've got to know colour very well in order to be able to do that. Um, mm. oh, I, think, I think people will be able to do it, Steve. It, it, the, I'm showing them anyway. I'm showing them why I did it and how I did it. So, and I explain it too. Uh, so it's interesting. I think you, artistic licence comes into play here. You, and very much so in a situation like that. You've got to use artistic license to change something that you're not, not quite happy with mm. it works very well in that particular case i was delighted with it let's talk about the sort of light reflection in the surface that it's on because that that mm. really is impressive you know you're you're mirroring those lovely colors but darker um mm. And you know exactly where the light is hitting because of the way that that reflection is presented right. on the the, um, the surface. I think Have people, you, I, you I think people doing that picture are going to love that section. I did. What I did, I did the, the, the background that you see, as I said, with three three zero and black, all the way through, leaving just a slightly larger area than you can see on the finished picture I got to as far as that and then between those two colors I started putting the shadow in with the 330 and uh, I think there's a couple of other colors I put in as well to, to develop some of that uh, base color for the lighter um, color and then I merged the two together the whole thing sort of melted together and uh, I love doing that. I love doing it anyway, and I loved it on that. That was one of, and it, it was the final touch as well. The final thing I did, the final shot, if you like, of the, of the, uh, the process, and uh, I, I, I reveled in that. But I like, I saw it on the original picture, photographic reference. I saw that then, and that was one of the reasons why I decided to do it. I love, I love. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not a great lover of background uh, information, you know, or detail. I'm not a lover of that. The Bulldog last week was sort of probably the limit to what I would do as far as that's concerned, but it worked with that. But if I had to try and doing something like that in the flowers, it would have been, it would have spoiled it. Would have been too busy, wouldn't it, as a picture as well? It's always 
it would have been too busy, wouldn't it? It, it would. Well, it would have taken it away. And as I've said so many times, you mustn't take away from the image. The image is the most important. Whatever you do surrounding that image has got to enhance it. It's got to back it up. It's a, and uh, by golly, it does in that one. That, that really looks good. It's people's imagination. They know that that's a shadow. You know it's a, it's a light, it's light source that's created with a bit of shadow in it. You don't have to have anything else. And this is why I think that is, I think that is going to be one of my favourite pictures of all time. That. Really? Wow. And I didn't think I would say that about a flower picture, Steve. No. Me yeah, they're not, ones that you, they're not ones that you choose to do very often. Um, still like. No. Well, I think um, in this case, I was persuaded simply because of the impact it made on me. Uh, when I first saw it, I thought, Wow, when you see something like that, you know you've got to do it. You know, you think, I've really got to do that. And it, if you know that, uh, as I do know, that I'm capable of producing something that is going to be acceptable, then it's, uh, it's even more exciting. Uh, and then you know that you're doing it for other people to look at, enjoy, learn from, and finally perhaps do it themselves. Because I think it's a picture that would hang very nicely on the wall somewhere yeah agreed, agreed. Picture, i've increased the line drawing slightly to give people not quite a four not quite it's just below a four in actual size but the picture i did was a slightly smaller than that but that's because i i need you know i, I, I need for the the area to be smaller from my um mechanics point of view you know the uh, technical side but i usually i uh, if i feel that it would stand a slightly bigger i make my line drawing just a tiny sort of a millimeter and a, not a millimeter a centimeter and a half bigger that's not a lot but it's enough to make it uh, uh, a, i think a bit more of a substantial picture for people what i think as well is a lovely little detail that I want to point out is the signature <laughs> you've done in a pink and I wouldn't have expected you to I don't I mean I suppose it, it makes logical sense of which color would you go for but I don't know I I a white maybe I thought maybe it would might be something else but you've chosen to sign it in pink that was interesting what why did you just decide to do that I, 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 no, I didn't. I signed it in black. Oh, I, sorry. I signed it in red. Oh, is it red? It's red. What it is, Steve, it's the um, 330. You know the colour 330? That colour that I've talked about? That's the colour I used. Because I, I wanted it to be subdued. I didn't want it to come out and hit me in the face. So mm. I subdued it. Yes, I, I did it in three three oh. I suppose white would have been too. Um, yeah. It would have stood out too much. That's right. You've got to be careful like that. I mean, I've seen I've seen a lot of um, a lot of the famous artists like Rembrandt, Monet. They they actually sign in black a lot. Um, and uh, although this isn't the same, and I probably would have signed it in in black if it had been on a on a green. Um, because generally speaking, but they they sign their they they don't make their signatures that prominent. I've seen artists that do. I don't like that much. I I think it's nice to have a signature that is subtle, informative, telling people it's there, but it shouldn't take away from the picture. And I don't think that does. You've got to look for that. Yeah, you have. I almost didn't see it. Mm -hmm. um... Because it's right at the bottom, but it's um, and it's in that red. But yeah, I thought that was a really cute little detail. Um, lovely. Well, it is. It is a striking picture. I hope people are going to give it a go. Um, and I hope people are as impressed with it as I was when I saw it yesterday. Um, and there we have it. So excellent. Right. Well, next week we won't have a picture next week, Dad. Um, but we have got lots to talk about next week. Um, if you want to add anything to our 
list for things to discuss next week. We've got some questions, we've got some things we're going to catch up on, things that have, people have been asking us, requests and certain things, um, certain topics that we're going to elaborate on, give some more detailed theory about some of the topics. So if you want to add anything to that list of things to talk about, then comment below this video, send us an email, get in touch with us um, and let us know what you'd like to discuss. And then um, we should be probably back to talking about a picture a week or two after that. But for now, we're going to go back to theory and stuff. Um, lovely. Excellent. Well, we will leave it there for this week. Thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. Enjoy. Enjoy. We, it sounded like it was together. It did, didn't it? Oh, the jubbly. I don't know whether I get another one on. I think I'll be all right. There's a cat that's trying to get in. Okay, you ready? Yep.